Hello everyone, I'm Dion and along with me today we have Shannon, Vanessa, Nicole and Yang Ling. Our group have decided to work on revamping our school facility booking system as our project and we have named it the FBS version 2.0. So we all know that the F SNU FBS is a web-based facility reservation application that provides users like you and me to manage the shared and bookable facilities in SNU. So it streamlines the reservation process and the usage of these common facilities within our campus. The FBS has served its purpose well over the past years, yet the biggest flaw that we find with the current application is that it lacks a responsive design and infrastructure for smaller screen sizes, like our mobile and tablet screens. So this means that the users have to log on to FBS with a laptop and desktop or desktop computer in order to successfully book a facility. So here's where our project comes in. We have revamped FBS with a responsive design for website and mobile to make it more user-friendly. And along with that, we have also have an updated and modern but visual design aimed at improving users' ability to navigate through the application and all in all more intuitive for all users. So we believe that it's an extremely useful project given the wide audience base that FBS serves. So example of usage would be for students like you and me to facilitate project meetings CCA camps and uh, welfare drives. So the two main screen sizes that we have chosen to design for is the typical window 13 inch laptop as well as the iPhone 11 screen. So on to the solution design. So of course Bootstrap was used to achieve the responsive design of the web application. We also made use of custom CSS which is mainly to customize the colors. So for example the distinct SNU navy blue that you see over here. And for pages that are quite hard to adopt a responsive design, for instance, the booking selection page and our task list, we have instead adopt an adaptive design, which we'll see in a bit during the demonstration. So this way, we're able to make sure that our application is still able to support the smaller screen sizes as we have laid out previously. Secondly, JavaScript and no doubt Vue.js was also used to make our app dynamic. So minimal jQuery was also used to facilitate the functionality of our application. So here I would like to take this chance to mention that the jQuery portion is credited to the open source project that we have found and since adopted into our codes. Lastly, also aimed at making our app a dynamic one, PHP was used in our API development and then subsequently, ASOS was leveraged to call it this API such that data can be retrieved from the database and used throughout the pages of our application. So because we do not have access to the original FBS databases, we have created our own mock database. So we tried our best to recreate one that's as similar as the original one. So we have all the existing SMU buildings and rooms that are typically available for students like us to book. We have also inserted tables for students and details of students, replicated some of the existing booking details such as duration and booking costs. So all of this was done using SQL and posted locally using WAM and on phpMyAdmin. So in creating our database, we also created classes that have private properties such that it can only be assessed inside the class that defines it, and they are only accessible through getters and setters method. So similarly, because we are not allowed access to IITS API for the original FBS, we have developed our own API from scratch using PHP and knowledge from WAD1. So in addition, to automate email delivery every time a student makes a booking request, confirms or rejects a booking request, we tap onto MailJet API to facilitate that. So this is the only API, external API that we have used in our web application. And for the rest, um, the bulk of our application functionality, we have used our own self-developed API. And then lastly, for the X factors that we have used, is actually just GitHub, which I'm sure most of us will be quite familiar with. So GitHub is especially useful during our development because all of us are working simultaneously on the project. So GitHub has been extremely helpful in facilitating our collaboration and helping with version control. So there were also several times when we had to roll back to our previous versions. So the functionality of Git and version control helped with that. And now onto our most exciting part of the presentation, we have the demonstration of our working application. Uh, I have a facility to book for a project meeting on the 23rd of November that was postponed. So first I'll need to log in using my school email and password. Oops, uh, I keyed in the wrong password so let me type in the right one. 
Okay, so after logging in, I'm able to filter according to what I want. Since I want to book a facility on the 23rd of November, I will first select the date and then book a GSR in SCIS since it's nearer to the MRT. I like the GSRs on the third floor, so I'll select that as well as select GSR for facility type. I will have to make a booking selection in order to click on the make booking button. So after verifying the booking date and school selection I made earlier, I'm going to take a look at the availability slots in the SCIS on a selected date. My favorite is the GSR 3-5. Since it's available, I will book that from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And also verify that the timing I've selected by looking at the label at the side. Oh wait, I just realized that it's a two-hour meeting, so I'll need to extend my booking to 5 p.m. Let me clear my selection and reselect my booking from 3 to 5 p.m. instead. Now that I'm done with my selection, I'll need to check through the booking details I've selected so far. So the room, date and booking time are correct. I'm ready to add co-booker for this booking. Since Shannon will be in this group, group meeting, I'll add her as co-booker. Let me search for Shannon in this list. Oops, uh, I forgot to add reason and agree to the terms and conditions. Let me do that. Okay. Now I've made the booking and also need to make sure that Shannon confirms the booking by the 15th of November. Oh, I see that I just received an email notification from FBS. Let me view the booking that Nicole just created. Yeah, I'm going to accept the booking on my mobile. So Nicole have created a booking for our meeting on 23rd. So I will confirm this booking. Oh, and I just realized I've got another booking that was mistakenly booked by my other group member. So I'm going to reject this booking. Oh, there's an email notification saying that my booking is confirmed. Let me go see my schedule to view my booking. Okay, here I can see all my upcoming confirmed bookings that I've made and also see the booking that was just confirmed. Since the project meeting has been postponed, I'm going to cancel the booking I made previously on the 22nd of November. Nice. Now let me check on the credits that I've left. I can add my profile. Yep. I can see my available credits and booking history from my profile. I can also click view more to see the full details of my past bookings. Okay, I'm done. Time for me to log out. Mm. I am tasked to book another facility for a different project meeting on the same day. So I'm going to make an additional booking on the 23rd of November. Let me repeat the same steps as before. But this time, I will pick the project room in the LKS library. I see that there are quite a few facilities that are available for me to book, so I shall book a project room in the library. Oh, I did not select the right date. It's supposed to be the 23rd of November instead of today's date. Let me change that right now. Oops, there's an error message. It seems like I'm unable to book multiple facilities on the same day. I shall book it for the next day then. Let me edit my search filters again. Okay, I'm all set. And with that, we have come to the end of our presentation. Thank you.